Welcome to lesson 3.3, which is savings accounts in uh, our financial algebra class. So let's start off this section with the vocabulary part. We're going to be talking about simple interest, by the way, in this vocabulary er, in this uh, chapter. So let's start off with the vocabulary. Um, the first word we have here is savings account. This is an account that earns interest from the bank for the use of the money in the account. So uh, as opposed to a checking account that we did last uh, chapter, a savings account has a limited number of transactions where you can take money in and out uh, because the bank wants you to keep the money in the account uh, for a longer period of time. And when you leave money in an account, you earn interest. The next word we have on our vocabulary word list here is minimum balance. This is the amount of money that the bank requires the account holder to have in an account to avoid a fee. So the bank is going to require that you keep a minimum of, let's say, for example, $500, maybe $1,000. And if your account drops below that amount, if it drops below the $500, let's say the $500 is the minimum balance. If your account drops to $499.99, there will be a fee that is uh, uh, imposed onto that account. To avoid the fee, just stay above the minimum balance. Next vocabulary word we have is interest. Now, interest um, is basically rent paid for the use of money. Now, interest can be earned or interest can be charged. So when you borrow money, the lender, the person who's giving you the money, uh, or who's letting you borrow the money anyways, is going to need to be compensated for that. And so you're going to pay back that money plus interest. You know, you're paying a rent on that money for the use of it. Or it could be the other way around. If you place money into the bank, you're allowing the bank to use those funds. And because you're putting money in the bank, you are essentially a bank yourself. And the bank has to pay you an interest. They're renting that money out from you. So you can earn interest or you can be charged interest. The next word we have here is a money market account. Now this is an account that pays a higher interest rate, but can often require greater initial deposits, greater minimum balance requirements, and may have a limited number of transactions. So you may not be able to take money in and out as easily in a money market account, and it may cost you a little more where a regular account might allow you to open the open it up with a, let's say $25 or $50 or whatever. A money market account might say you have to have a $10,000 minimum balance or you need $10,000 to open this type of account. So um, the plus side is the larger they require a larger amount of money but they also pay a little more interest. Next vocabulary word is a is the principal. Now this is the amount of money initially invested or the amount of money initially borrowed. So if you're investing money, if you're buying a CD, which is our next vocabulary word by the way, if you're going to put money into a CD, $5,000 let's say, over a three month period, at the end of three months, you're gonna get your principal back, the 5,000 that you put in, plus some interest that you earned. Now, um, it could work in reverse. Let's say you're gonna buy a house and you need a loan. You can take out a loan for $500,000 to buy a house. Now, when you go to pay that back, you're going to pay back the same 500 that you borrowed plus interest that you pay that you uh, been paying over the life of the loan. So the principal is either the amount that you put into an investment or it's the amount that you initially borrowed, also known as a balance, by the way. A certificate of deposit is our next vocabulary word. This is also known as a CD, and it's a record, it's basically a contract, but a record of having a specific account on deposit with a guarantee of a fixed interest rate upon maturity. So you're locking your money into an account for a period of time. CDs can be three months, six months, nine months, a year, three years, five years, seven years. It's a contract between you and the bank and you're agreeing to leave the money in that account for a certain period of time. And uh, the longer the period of time that you leave it in there for, the higher the interest rate that you're going to earn. All right, our next vocabulary word is simple interest. Now, the formula for this is I is equal to P times R times T, where I represents the interest that you earn, P represents the principal. Uh, the initial investment. R represents the rate and we express that rate as a decimal and T represents time and then and for our, our examples here we're going to use time as a number of years. So that is the formula for simple interest. Maturity. Maturity is a specified date in the future when a finance agreement comes to term. So we were talking about a CD previously and if you buy a CD for a three month period after three months it is fully matured. 
um, we can kind of use the same uh, structure if you're borrowing money if you borrow a uh, five-year note to buy a vehicle when the contract ends that contract has fully matured so maturity is a specified date in the future when a finance agreement comes to term all right let's work on these classroom examples we got example number one we got Liam who wants to buy five thousand dollars or sorry wants to deposit five thousand dollars into a CD for two years which bank pays the highest interest rate for the two-year CD? Write these in ascending order. So the difference between ascending and descending. Think of a plane. When a plane takes off, it ascends into the air. So you start from the bottom and you increase all the way to the top altitude. Versus descending, you're already in the air and you start to come down to earth. So you start to descend. You start from the top and work your way down. So we're looking at these different banks and they're offering different interest rates. We got Chase Bank at 4 and 1 fourth percent. We got Wells Fargo at 4.22%. We got SDCCU at 4 and 3 eighths percent. And Bank of America or B of A at 4.3%. And we have to put these in ascending order. So uh, the first thing I would want to do is convert the fraction 4 and 1 fourth into a decimal. So it's easier to see compared to the other ones. So if I do that, 4 and 1 fourth, that's 4 and a quarter, that's 4.25%. Then the other fraction I see there is 4 and 3 eighths. 3 eighths is basically 1 fourth with half of another fourth on there. So if I look at a quarter, which is 25 cents for example, and I were to break it in half, it'd be 12 and a half cents. So I take my 4.25 and I add 0.125 to it, and I get 4.375%. That's what uh, SDCCU is charging. So now I just gotta put these in order. The lowest one I see there is going to be the 4.22% that belongs to Wells Fargo. And then the next in line would be the 4.25% and then the which is the um, Chase Bank and then after that is going to be the F uh, let's see Bank of America actually is going to be 4.3% and then last would be the SDCCU 4.375 and in this case, I would want to pick SDCCU because it has the highest interest rate. So that way we put them in order, in ascending order from lowest to greatest. Next problem we have here, checking for understanding example number two. Mila's saving account must have at least $500 in it, um, or she gets charged a $4 fee. Her balance was $716.23, and then she withdrew $225. What's her new balance? So if we're taking a look at this, we're, we're starting off with $716.23. And if we follow her, her example here, she's going to take out $225 and, uh, from that account. That's going to leave her with $491.23. Now that would be her ending balance, except that she dropped below that $500 minimum balance amount. So there's an additional $4 fee that we have to assess to her balance. So where she had $491.23 with the $225 withdrawal, now she's also going to get charged $4 by the bank, so that drops her down to $487.23. And then our checking for understanding question says, if no deposits or withdrawals were made for X months, express her balance algebraically. So in other words, what this question is asking is it's saying for how many months is she going to get charged the $4? So what we're going to have to do is multiply the $4 times X number of months and then subtract that from her balance. So our algebraic expression is going to be $487.23 minus 4X. And then that would give us the amount that she would have left over after X number of months. Now checking for understanding example number three. James deposited $1,200 into an account that pays him 4.5% simple interest. Assume no deposits or withdrawals, how much will he have after three years? So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the equation I is equal to P times R times T. So interest is equal to principal times rate times time. And we're going to input the information that they gave us. They know, we know that he has a principal balance of $1,200. We know that his interest rate is 4.5% and we know we're going to hold that money for three years. So we input that into our equation. It's going to be I is equal to 1200 times 0 0.045 because we have to convert the decimal, uh, the uh, percent into a decimal, and then times three. And what it, we end up coming up with is I is equal to $162. That represents the interest that you would have earned on the $1200 after the three year period. 
So we take our principal deposit and we add it, well, our principal deposit of $1,200, and we add it to the $162 in interest that we earned, and its ending balance after three years is gonna be $1,362. Example number four. How much simple interest will Armando earn with a $2,000 deposit after seven months at a rate of 5%? So we're gonna use the same example, or the same uh, equation that we used in the previous example. I is equal to P times R times T, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna set this up so we're gonna have two thousand dollars in principal. We're gonna have a rate of 0 0.05, which is five percent. But for the time, we've got to remember that we're measuring time in terms of years. So we're not gonna put a seven in there. We're actually gonna put seven divided by twelve in place of time because that's seven twelfths of a year. So they didn't earn interest for the entire year. And so when we multiply that out, two thousand times 0 0.05 times seven over twelve we get approximately $58.33. So uh, after that seven month period, the uh, if we were to pull the money out from the account earning that simple interest, we would have earned $2,000, we would have had $2,000, which is our principal, and we would have earned $58.33 in interest. Add that together, you get $2,058.33. Next, example number five. Now in example number five, it says, how much principal must Liam deposit to earn $1,000 in simple interest in two years at a rate of 5%? So now we don't know what the principal is. We're gonna use the same equation. We're gonna use I is equal to P times R times T, and we're gonna solve for, for P, the principal part. So first I'm gonna do this algebraically. I'm gonna start off with just the letters, and I notice that P and R and T are all being multiplied. So if I divide by R and T to isolate P by itself, that'll turn R into one, R over R into one, T over T into one. I'm left with P is equal to I over R T. So the interest divided by the rate times time will give me the answer I'm looking for. So now all I gotta do is substitute in the values. I'm gonna solve for the principal. And so I'm gonna take the interest that I earned, which is we're assuming he wants to earn $1,000 in interest. And he's gonna divide that by the two year time and a rate of 5% or 0 0.05. And when we do that, we find out that he has to invest $10,000 for two years at a rate of 5% in order to earn that $1,000 in interest. Example number six, Mila has a bank balance of $910 in an account that earns 4.1% simple interest. When, the account, uh, when will the account grow to $1,000? So what we have to do here first is figure out how much interest uh, Mila's gonna earn. So we're saying that she had $910, and then at the end of this, uh, when this uh, investment matures, or when we're done, it's gonna be $1,000. So the difference between 1,000 and 910 is $90. She's gonna earn $90 in interest. And so what we do here is, in this example, we're actually solving for time, because it's asking us when will the account grow. So we're going to take our initial um, equation, i is equal to p times r times t, and this time we're going to solve for t. We're going to get t all by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by pr, and on one side they're going to become 1s, leaving t by itself. And on the other side of the equation here, we're going to have i divided by p times r, or interest is equal to principal times rate. And we're going to plug in what we know. We know she's going to earn $90 in, in uh, interest. We know that the principal amount was $910, and we know that the interest rate is 4.1%, so we gotta put that into our equation as a decimal, that's gonna be 0 0.041. And then we do the math, all right? Crunch the numbers, T comes out to be 2.2 years. That's just over two years um, that the money will have to sit so that she earns $90 in interest, so that uh, she, at a rate of 4.1%, she comes out with a thousand dollars when she invested nine hundred and ten dollars and then of course we got a checking for understanding here here that says how long will it take ten thousand dollars to double at a eleven percent simple interest so if we're looking at doubling that means we we start off with ten thousand we end with twenty thousand that's gonna be a ten thousand dollar interest um, payment that you're gonna get uh, at eleven percent and we're gonna figure out how long it's gonna take to do that so we're going to use the same example that we did, uh, the same equation that we did for example number six when we already solved for t, and we're going to input the i on the numerator part, uh, numerator part, and that's going to be ten thousand dollars. Our principal is going to be ten thousand dollars because we need to earn ten thousand in interest to get to twenty, and we're going to multiply that by eleven percent or 0.11. So we take ten thousand divided by ten thousand times 0.11, and we end up with nine point zero nine years. It's going to take just over nine years 
for $10,000 to double at 11%. Lastly, we have example number seven. Example number seven says Mila and Liam combine their money to invest $5,000 in a simple interest account for five years. What interest rate must they get in order to have $6,000 at the end of the five year period? So they're going to put in $5,000, they're going to get out $6,000, so that means there's going to be $1,000 in interest earned after five years. And what we need to figure out is what rate we're going to put this in. So we know the principal. We know the, the time frame of five years. We know the interest amount. What we don't know is the time. I'm sorry, is the rate. So we're going to take our original equation, i is equal to p times r times t, and we're going to solve for r. So we're going to divide both sides by p and by t, and that isolates the r on one side. And on the other side, we get i divided by p times t. Now we know i is going to be the interest. That's going to be the $1,000 because they they're going to put in $5,000, get out $6,000. That's $1,000 in interest. And we're going to divide that by... 5,000, which is the principal amount that they put in, times the five years that they're going to put that money in for. And what we end up coming up with is a 40% uh, that they need to invest it. That's a 40% interest rate over a five-year period to get $1,000 um, in interest earned. So my little two cents on the savings account. Uh, a savings account is a great thing for you to get started. I think of it more as a storage account. So you put money into this storage account and it's only going to earn you very minimal interest. You need to educate yourself just a little bit further. You increase your financial IQ just a little bit and you can start to earn larger returns of investment. When I do investments, I'm looking for something around 8 to 10% minimum as a return on investment. But it takes a little bit more of an education uh, financially to get to that level. So uh, use this as a storage. And in the meantime, listen to podcasts, watch videos, read books, educate yourself on different aspects of finance so that you can take your stored money and then turn around and make it work for you to develop the different types of income streams known as passive income. So take your, you know, take this money, take this little bit, you know, start paying yourself first, put money away, constantly put money away, store it, store it, store it, store it until you're to the point where you're ready to invest into something bigger. And hopefully in the, in the time that you're disciplining yourself to put that money away and the time that you're spending uh, in, in put, working for that money, you're also educating yourself. And when it comes time to invest, you have a wealth of different uh avenues that you can go to based on the education that you've gotten and of course you can always go to our podcast business bros um, or you can go to our website www.csfirst.com that's s-i-a-s-f-i-r-s-t dot com to get more education and increase your financial iq that's all i got for you guys peace and i'm out